Now, I wouldn't blame you guys if you forgot, because this isn't the 90s anymore, but SNL is still on the air. And it always seems like this time of year, whenever an election's around, they seem to pop their withered old head out to spew a couple of unfunny jokes and make some barbs at whoever the Republican du jour is this time around, and... Well, you can't even say they're going after a Republican this time because Bill Burr's controversial SNL opening monologue on race and Pride Month draws mixed reactions. In case you guys don't know who Bill Burr is, with the exception of maybe Kevin Hart, probably the most well-known comedian out there working today. I've been aware of Bill Burr as an old O&A fan for the better part of, well, two decades now. He was never one of my most favorite guests. I'd never looked forward to any of his appearances on the show. He's kind of, he's just a middle of the road kind of guy who the best thing for Bill Burr is when he gets angry and he goes on his rants because they're abs they're acerbic and very staccato pacing that really is quite funny just how he can mix in pointed barbs and filthy language in order to get his point across like a perfect example is very very early in ona's uh, satellite radio days was when uh scott farrell he's a sports analyst and i forget who he's working for now but he has like the worst voice in all of radio and he would come on ONA and talk sports every once in a while and Bill Burr was in studio and uh, they had a conversation about hockey and Bill just went off on him and it was great. And of course everybody's heard of the famous Philly rant that was at the ONA Virus Festival and that's kind of what catapulted him into stardom. So just because I've been aware of him for such a long time it's nice to see one of the boys really transcend that group of individuals even though in my opinion there are much more deserving people in that group. But hey fuck he rode that center line right to success and what they're trying to get on for him it was about a seven minute ish monologue about six and a half minutes and realistically ugh, i don't know i didn't really chuckle i didn't really laugh it was uh edgy for what late night comedy shows have turned into but we'll go through i got a couple of articles here and we're also just gonna shit on usa today and people for basically having the exact same script with just a couple of different words plunked in because all the media is trash anymore bill burr is in the hot seat after his controversial opening monologue from last weekend's episode of saturday night live during his sketch the 52 year old comedian didn't hold back a he really did, as he made blistering jokes addressing cancel culture, white women, and Pride Month. But they also didn't mention the fact that he opened up his monologue and the first couple of minutes were dedicated to COVID. He's like, I wear a mask, you know, and uh, yeah, I don't care if you don't wear a mask. Go kill grandma. I don't care. You're stupid. He said all of this shit, and uh, they don't mention that in any, in any of these articles. So he played to one side of the base. And then he attacked the other side of the base. That's what a good comedian does. You see the humor on both sides. And uh, you attack it as best you can. Because humor, nothing is off limits when it comes to humor. Unless, of course, you're addressing this outrage mob. Where everything is everything is political and everything's offensive. Duh. Not long after taking the stage on Saturday night. Burr jumped into a joke about how people are literally running out of people to cancel. Well, it sure seems that way. They're going after dead people now. They're trying to cancel John Wayne. It's like, God did that 40 years ago, he said. Yeah, uh, John Wayne was a very staunch Republican, and once he eventually did really assert those views, that was towards the end of his career when he wasn't making so many hot videos anymore. Uh, his Western days were through, but he was... Even you take a look at... Uh, Everything that people likes to cite, like a Playboy interview, very much of the time dialogue, which now you can clean up in order to, you know, appeal to the idiots out there, but it's nothing worth canceling the fucking old... It's the Duke, for Christ's sakes. Yeah, try your best. The commentary shifted to how white women have hijacked the woke movement. Generals around the world should be analyzing this, he joked. The woke movement was supposed to be about how people of color not getting opportunities that they deserve. Yeah, in uh, 2018, 2019, 2020, where are those opportunities? Uh, is there affirmative action for other non-black minorities? Yeah, I don't think so, but uh, whatever, Bill. He's a comedian. You don't need to criticize his jokes. Then, somehow, white women swung their Gucci-booted feet over the fence of oppression and stuck themselves at the front of the line. Hey, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You take a look at those riots. You take a look at the most vocal protesters out there. What are they? Yeah, you're just fat, unattractive, bitchy white women. That's 100% true. I didn't laugh at this statement when he made the joke, but uh, yeah, I 100% agree. 
Bill called out white women for ignoring their own contribution to racial oppression. The nerve of you white women, he said. You guys stood by us toxic white males throughout centuries of our crimes against humanity. No, it's called a joke. It wasn't a statement about ignoring their own contribution. You you rolled around in the blood money and occasionally you wanted to sneak off and hook up with a black dude if you caught... If you got caught, you said it wasn't consensual. Yeah, that's what she did. So do, why don't you shut up, sit down next to me, and take your talking to? Yeah, if you read it like that, it just sounds like a screed that any one of those SJWs out there would be uh, parodying. Like, he hit a bunch of the you know, the buzzwords there. Toxic white male. Take your talking to. Yeah, if you read it without the uh, staccato delivery of Bill Burr, yeah. Uh, I could fit into any Robin D'Angelo speech, you know. As he neared the end of his monologue, yeah, Burr brought up Pride Month, asking the audience if he thought it was a little too long of a celebration. Oh really? Let's see how People categorizes this. For a group of people that have never been enslaved, how do they get all of June, he said, comparing Pride Month to Black History Month in February. Black people were actually enslaved, and they get February. They get 28 days of overcast weather, sun goes down, at 4 in the afternoon, everyone is shivering, he said. Yeah, how about not making mention the fact that, uh, he was making fun of the absurdity of Pride Month and the uh, gay pride parades where it's just a bunch of yeah, men with 0% body fat and tank tops hugging and kissing and rubbing up against each other. And it's like, oh, this is supposed to be a celebration of the crimes and all the uh, oppression that we've overcome. How about including that? But uh, that doesn't fit, or fit the regular old people narrative. And here's where we see the plug and play nature of this shit. Bill Burr's opening monologue received mixed reactions from Saturday Night viewers last weekend, but many of the comedian's fans weren't surprised when he discussed that what viewers deemed controversial topics. Yeah, the exact same verbiage, mixed reactions. He's a comedian, you fucking dolts. Burr hosted NBC's show for the first time Saturday, cracking jokes about actor Rick Moranis getting sucker punched, cancel culture, performative activism from white women, and gay pride month. The only part that I'll read here is about the Rick Moranis, because I don't really want to retread everything that we just read. Well, actually, I won't be doing any reading of that, because USA Today couldn't even be bothered, and that was the only one that really was like, eh, who cares, but, uh, yeah, he brought up the story where Rick Moranis was walking in the, uh, his neighborhood in New York City and then just got sucker punched for no good reason. He went, yeah, New York City's back! Yes, because everybody lusts after that uh, taxi driver image of New York City where it wasn't even safe to go outside after the sun went down and New York City was just, er, and Times Square was just for degenerate crackheads. If you people like that image of uh, New York City, just head down to LA, that works just as well too with, uh, or fuck, just skip on over to San Francisco where there's a human shit tracker. That's just such a lusting after something that you don't have type of opinion, which uh, I can't get behind. At least this USA Today article has some proof that he's always just been kind of a uh, center-left milk toast fence-sitter. And it's also just going to be used as proof when they try to cancel him, which they've already, already attempted to do on Twitter, but uh, it's fucking Twitter. It's not real life here, people. Burr also has been unafraid to get political while he addresses the upcoming presidential election. He compared the 2016 contest to the first week of an American Idol in Bill Burr, Walk Your Way Out, a former comedy special of his. You know what this is really like? No, oh, my mistake. You know what's really like? This is what I got. He asked the audience, calling Donald Trump a racist dope and Hillary Clinton the devil. And he really ratcheted up this whole race thing, and you could see it transform on the old ONA show, because... This really doesn't matter, but this was really a center point of when Bill Burr started to change a lot more to the left. He's married to a black woman. And she, yeah, she's also a fervent leftist, but at the same time, hey, he's happy and they have a kid together. So terrific, great on him. But he really started to champion the uh, evilness of white women without calling out uh, anything else. But that was always kind of his shtick, so I can't really get on his ass too much about that. But these canceling attempts for Bill Burr aren't going to fucking happen. It's just like when uh, Kevin Hart was supposed to be hosting the Oscars and for whatever reason, old, uh, what was it, old homophobic remarks or old sexual abuse claims or it's one of those things where all of this cancel culture shit just gets all mixed up and it's one of, it's, yeah, pick your complaint so it's hard to keep everything straight. <clears throat> really trying to cancel a comedian at this level is fucking absurd. It, what was the last time that it happened? You'd have to go back to what? Bill Maher saying Muhammad Atta and his friends flying into the World Trade Centers in 2001. 
had courage and then what not that long after he got a fucking same talk show on hbo this time where he can have his train seals in the audience just clap for whatever he says the fucking worst audience on television but of course like i'm saying yeah it's not gonna happen for bill but one of his contemporaries one of his fellow ona alumni as it were has gotten canceled just because he made jokes about COVID. More importantly, he is a much more right-leaning individual. His name is Nick DiPaolo. YouTube has shut me down because I told the truth about COVID being used for politic political gains, is what he should have wrote. Yeah, but I understand. 240 characters. My show will be on Patreon tomorrow through Thursday. My new platform comes out in two weeks from now. Value free speech. Sh sign up here to his Patreon account, which uh, you absolutely should because Nick DiPaolo is hilarious. He's always been hilarious. And because he isn't at the level of Bill Burr, he, yeah, he gets cancelled. He gets thrown to the side like <clears throat> those who don't want to play the golden handcuffs game. Social media is on the hunt for outspoken conservatives. Uh, Nick is chief among them. And you know, people with these kind of opinions really need to look at diversifying their platforms that they're on and making sure that the one tech monopoly can't effectively destroy their potential earning capabilities from the the whims of those who can't be held accountable and that's why reforming 230 is a great idea and supporting people whose ideas you at least enjoy you don't even have to necessarily agree with people all the time you just have to be able to discern the truth from the horseshit and nick does that great and i attempt to do the same on this channel and i thank every single one of you out there for taking the time to watch this video if you appreciate what I do, feel free to drop a subscribe or hit the like button or, hey, drop a comment if you want to talk about the banality that was Bill Burr's monologue, old O&A episodes, what the fuck happened with Nick here, or really anything in general because I'm down to talk about it. So I appreciate the gift of your time and I've been Don Consuelo. I want you guys to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.